Hello everybody and thank you for coming back to the channel and to this chapter which is going to be about the painting and the markings for the Spitfire, for the Willow Spitfire model 504, the small one, um, full rubber powered. As you know the other one was a seat conversion, this is rubber powered. I've already started a little bit of the painting, I've painted the canopy as I didn't make a plastic one if you managed to see that how I failed with that one so I've painted it grey and I've also painted the wheel hubs so it looks a bit better. The, the landing gear does come out. Now originally I was intending to do this in a blue color. Why blue? Because there was a squadron, I think it was a US squadron, flying out of, uh, of England doing reconnaissance flights and I've seen some documentaries about it and some nice videos about it and I thought what better way of giving a homage to our American friends by painting a Spitfire blue. It wasn't only the, the British that were flying Mustangs in, in RAF livery but also the Americans were flying Spitfires right so that was my, my original plan but I have a small daughter and she likes the color pink so she asked me to make it pink and I said it can't be pink have you ever seen a pink Spitfire and lo and behold I looked it up and there was a squadron flying pink Spitfires also reconnaissance flights which is also good for me and the, the, I think there's still one flying around which is a pink Spitfire. So I'm afraid I'm not going to do the homage to our American friends with this one. But in exchange I promise that the next big project that I'm going to do is going to be an American plane. But this one is going to be another RAF one and in pink. So now what I have to do is uh, I want to see the markings exactly. I'm going to look up the markings what they look like. To do the roundels and, uh, and the rest of the markings that are going to be on it and uh, then it's going to be the challenge on this part about mixing the paint um, because I'm not very good at it and I think I need to paint it all in one first swoop so it's also going to be challenging I need to mix enough paint without wasting too much to be able to paint the whole model because if I have to mix it again then it's going to be difficult to get the same tonality so so this is going to be a bit of the challenge but first thing a bit more research to see what the pink Spitfire looks like so follow me along on this one so I've been worried about mixing the paint for, for quite some time now, so I bought pink paint. Which is by chance, but I'm happy I found it. I hope it kind of matches and as I have so much then I won't have a problem about having to stop or anything like that because if I had to mix it I would have to do it all in one go so as not to waste paint. It wasn't expensive as you can see, I don't think it's top quality so I'm going to first of all try it on the landing gear part to see how it covers and then maybe also on the nose block which is just pure on wood and then I'll get onto the tissue, maybe start with the tail and uh, if needed maybe even two, two layers, but we'll see but I'm happy that I don't need to do the mixing and I won't be stressed about the time and it drying up and running out of paint so, so I'll get to it So that's the nose block and the landing gear. The paint seems to be covering okay, which is good. I'm, I'm happy with that. And the color, I think it's also okay. My wife did suggest that I make it like phosphorescent pink, but that would be a bit too much, at least at this, at this point in time. But uh, anyhow, I'll get on with the rest, with the body of the airplane, and, uh, and let's see how that goes. But um, so far, I'm happy with it. Here it is, it's coming along. I do have the feeling that this paint needs a bit more paint, more a thicker layer of paint to cover, but I don't care because it's um, I've got a ton of it, so it's good. Also, I've put in the landing gear now, which is good because then I can put it down and uh, let it dry for a bit. I'm going to finish still the underside of the wing and then I'll see how late it is. And I might continue then tomorrow, or if not, I might then go right for it. So let's see. But anyhow, this is the progress. This is going to be the color. I hope it dries and gets taut again with the, with the tissue. And uh, I'll come back when it's pretty much done. So here is the final view of the pink Spitfire that I made. Um, I painted it, maybe I did it a bit too fast. I put a very thick layer, so I think you'll be able to see that the, the tissue is not quite taut. So lessons learned from that is not be impatient as I am and put maybe thin layers, two thin layers of uh, paint might have been better. The color is I think more intense than, um, 
than the original but on the other hand uh, my daughter loved it so I'm fine with it, so more than fine with it um, I've built up this jig also to try to get the center of gravity and even without the wheels it would work the, I've been doing some kind of launches over the bed to see how it flies and the first thing was that it was very tail heavy so I had to put in some weight in the nose Overall the weight now with the rubber, with the propeller and with the weight is 50 grams which is like 1.8 ounces Alone the weights are like 15 grams which is half an ounce So it's, it's like 30% of the whole weight is the, the nose ballast um, One thing I did, I don't know if you can see it, I used the, I used the weights that uh, mechanics use on their, when they put on the tires I think Something else that I know Cliff uses also And I've got there three weights of 5 grams each the two weights on the side was okay because I had kind of the gap there when I was building the cowling. I didn't do it on purpose but I was happy about it. The weight at the bottom I had to drill a hole there to, to shove in that, um, that weight inside. So um, one thing also another lesson learned is I know that it's going to be heavy or it's going to need ballast in any case. So ready to try to plan ahead to have space to put in that ballast for any future models. That's kind of my another lesson learned from, from, from me. Um, overall a very nice build at least it's fun like it's possible to do it for with the plan except for the two stringers on the side that as I was saying in other videos they're not on the plan so it's good that I still had the, the old the old uh, balsa cutouts um, which is a bit of a pity I would say it wouldn't take up too much space and uh, and it would actually be a very valuable plan on its own uh, landing gear is there it can be taken off it sits very nicely on its landing gear, even if it's not completely solid. And I think it looks it looks good actually on the landing gear, which is where it's going to spend probably most of its time. So it's overall good. Now I have to wait for good weather and uh, for long grass, which is uh, not easy for me in my area, um, to see if I can do some test flights and let's see how much I can get. If I get 10 to 20 seconds out of it, if I get 15 seconds, I, th I think I'm going to be happy. But that's going to take time to, to get it. And uh, let's see, let's see how it goes. So, anyhow, this is the the last chapter, at least of the build of the of the Spitfire. Um, I can recommend it. It's a fun build. I don't know if it flies probably as big as the other ones. As some of you are saying on the comments, uh, in terms of modeling, the smaller, the more difficult. So all. All my respect to those who fly peanut scales and uh, pistachio scale models because it's really it's really difficult. But uh, I do recommend it. Like it's a, a cute little model. It's another Spitfire for the collection, and I'm kind of sure it's not going to be the last Spitfire. I'm not sure why. But anyhow, thank you everybody for watching and for your comments and all your encouragement. And I'll see you next time.